Welcome into the New Orleans Pelicans podcast presented by SeatGeek, a podcast dedicated to everything you need to know about the squad. Uh, I mean, physically I'm fine. Now it's just a matter of uh, like when I feel like Zion. Uh, so now it's just a matter of when I feel like Zion. The New Orleans Pelicans podcast starts right now. Welcome to the Pelicans podcast presented by SeatGeek. I am Joe Cardosi, once again not joined by the mending Jim Eichenhofer as he continues to become stronger, faster, so that he will come back a menacing presence on the Pelicans podcast. We look forward to his return and we fear it. But looking ahead to things that I am looking forward to and not afraid of, tonight's matchup against the Oklahoma City Thunder, a scrappy underdog team, maybe a bit ahead of schedule, reminds me a bit of our Pelicans. We are going to talk to Nick Gallo, sideline reporter for Bally Sports, covering the Oklahoma City Thunder. No one better to get the report on the team we are facing tonight that a fellow who sees them constantly on the sidelines, breaking down the ins and outs. Uh, looking forward to the conversation with Nick Gallo there. Also, as I record this, shoot around is happening. So uh, once that ends, going to bring Aaron Summers, our own team reporter, our own sideline reporter in for a little scoop of what she saw at shoot around and what she expects to see tonight. Going to be interesting stuff. So stay tuned for that as Aaron Summers will join me once she's done with her shoot around duties. But we got to get to the big news, I guess the biggest news other than the game at hand tonight, and uh, that's what you heard in the intro to today's podcast. Zion Williamson has spoken. Finally, the people have been asking for it, uh, trying to figure out through all kinds of conspiracy theories when Zion might talk. There is nothing else to uh, conjecture about. Zion said it himself. He he doesn't feel like himself. He he feels fine physically, but he doesn't feel like himself. Now, that's a, that's a nebulous uh, subject that, that all kinds of people can have all kinds of answers about. But a thing that you can never know about someone else is how it feels to be in their skin. Being consistently injured on the same leg is, of course, going to make you trepidatious. And a bunch of fans are saying, ah, well, of course, a 70% Zion Williamson or a 50% Zion Williamson is better than anything else you trot out there. But what you don't understand is if Zion comes back, the focal point of your offense is going to become, to some degree, Zion Williamson. And if he isn't acting like himself, if he isn't making the plays that you expect of him when he becomes a focal point of your offense upon his arrival, of course that will hobble the team. Of course it will. So Zion isn't incorrect when he says he doesn't want to hurt the team by not being able to play like himself. We saw it a little bit with Brandon Ingram when he came back from that toe injury. It took him a bit to really look like himself, to, to look like the confident scorer that we know right now is averaging about 30 points a game. It's tough. It's tough. But the good news is that he does say he feels good physically. That's step one. ESPN's Andrew Lopez asking Zion, would you be able to go in a first-round series? And Zion answering, if I feel like Zion. Zion will continue to rehabilitate, continue doing on-the-court activities, and we wish him the best. Now, on to the task at hand before we can look ahead to anything that we might see or do in the first round of a playoff series. The Pelicans have to defeat the Oklahoma City Thunder. It's win or go home. This is it. SGA has given the Pelicans fits as he has given the entire league fits uh, this entire season. You know, they're, they're sort of playing with house money right now. A lot of people think they're early to maybe this play-in series, playoff contention. So you don't know how loose they're going to play. Now, whoever moves on from this game will face a hobbled Timberwolves team at Minnesota. So, and honestly, the Lakers didn't look that great playing against those Timberwolves. So either way, uh, you know, that would have fallen. The Pelicans, in my heart, looked like the odds might be pretty good to continue moving on. Again, if you beat this Oklahoma City Thunder squad. And we're not looking ahead. We are locked in. What is this Thunder team? How are they going to play the Pelicans? Well, let's get the scoop. 
from Mr. Nick Gallo, sideline reporter for Bally Sports covering the Oklahoma City Thunder. Let's speak to the Oklahoma City Thunder's Nick Gallo. Joining us on the Pelicans podcast, sideline reporter for the Oklahoma City Thunder, who the Pelicans are facing tonight. No one better to get the scouting report from Mr. Nick Gallo. Give him a follow on Twitter at Nick A. Gallo. Nick, how are you doing before this big matchup? Doing great. Just enjoying your city of New Orleans. Um, had a had a nice dinner last night and looking forward to what should be a really exciting matchup here and um, a new experience for the Thunder and obviously uh, something that, that New Orleans, the Pelicans, uh, is familiar with here in the plan. Yeah, and uh, hopefully dinner treated you uh, well last night. I know New Orleans food is uh, always a treat for those visiting, uh, but you know, as a Pelicans fan, we want that to be the best thing y'all enjoy. Uh, here selfishly uh, but uh, you know y- y'all are a scrappy team and I have friends in Oklahoma City uh, who I talk to about basketball all the time and it's funny because you guys remind me of us in a lot of ways you're a young team uh, you're building with a young core that's been built in-house uh, for the most part and you're sort of ahead of schedule it almost seems like and uh, maybe surprising people with where you're at this early, especially with no Chet Holmgren, uh, et cetera. So, you know, what what would you say is the defining uh, part of your team's success? I mean, obviously you point to SGA, but what where would you say this team's success so early on is coming from? Well, Joe, I would say that really the success, the results are a product of the process that the Thunder has engaged in on a daily basis. They really have not been focused on the outcomes. Mm -hmm. What they've been focused on is the daily work, and they've really tried to keep their head down and be focused on the the values and the things that eventually go into winning as opposed to maybe chasing a win on a night in night out basis. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for, as you're, as you're talking about these young cores, you know, New Orleans can say the same thing is that, you know, there are times where, the team is making progress, but the results aren't necessarily showing on the scoreboard. And there's, there's not always a direct one-to-one ratio there with the way that guys are improving the work that's being put in and, you know, the results coming on the scoreboard. But over the course of time, the thunder is betting on that process playing out and, and bearing fruit. So I think, you know, the, that's sort of the bigger picture um, aspect of, of why the thunder has been able to, you know, have some good results, uh, in the standings on the scoreboard. Um, but, but more than that, I think it's it's just um, the players and the work that they've put in and, and the connection that they've made. This has been a really tight-knit team. Um, it starts with a leader like Shea, who plays with such great restraint, um, and that's not usually a word that you hear with a 30-point-per-game scorer. But right. um, that's, one of, that's one of Shea's best attributes, is the ability to um, kind of really calibrate um, his aggressiveness versus, you know, how to make sure that he's playing inside the team concept and knowing when, you know, he's got to kind of push things a little bit more, but he, he never really plays outside of himself or outside of the team. And I think that has a trickle down effect as well. You know, and that's the thing, you know, what you're getting out of Shea Gilgis Alexander, you know, he's not going to be shooting a bunch of threes. He's going to keep driving to the rack and score a bunch of points. Uh, and so for the Pelicans, it's just an interesting defensive assignment you know you you you, for the pelicans you got to hope that uh Jonas and herb can sort of build a wall but then you got to worry about foul trouble so honestly uh you know how do you keep from the oklahoma city perspective how do you keep herb jones off of sga and keep him effective well the thunder has been focused all season long and in particular in some of these new orleans matchups just given how much uh, Herb and then you know a second defender will come over and double team Shea. Right. Uh, the Thunder is really focused on making quick early decisions with the ball, getting it out, being able to play four on three on the backside, and executing the you know five man playmaker offense that the Thunder has. And and that's really what OKC has tried to execute on all season is that all five guys can be a threat to pass, shoot, dribble. Um, and you know, make the next play for the for the next guy. We've seen so many backdoor cuts. We've seen so many um, drives to the rim. The Thunder leads the NBA in drives, and while you know a, a, a large percentage of those are Shea, um, 
you know, out of the, the 65 drives a game, you know, about 24 of them are from Shea, but that means there's another 40 or so from everybody else. Mm-hmm. And, and so what you're getting from the Thunder is um, opportunities on the backside of the play they can make quick decisions and then attack out of them against the length of New Orleans, which is no easy task. It's one of the reasons why the Pelicans have been one of the better defensive teams all season and, and are able to swarm people with their length and, and size and are able to make up ground on the backside. I mean, I think that's something that um, the Pelicans kind of are counting on is that, you know, they can recover, they can get back with quickness and with length and, you know, put pressure on main guys and then, um, try to rush the the you know secondary playmakers on the backside. Yeah, I mean, you, you got to figure that Herb is going to be picking up SGA full court. Uh, he fights through screens really well, one of the best in the league at that. And so how important are J-Dub and Giddy going to be to your team? I mean, do they have to be lights out if uh, SJ is having a tough offensive night? How important are they going to be for your success uh, in this game? Well, I don't think it's it's necessarily you know on one or two guys. I think the the, the most important thing and um, Thunder coach Mark Dagnall would say thing this same thing is that um, their five man unit executes it at a high level. So that doesn't necessarily mean that it's got to be um, Giddy or, or Jalen Williams, J Dub that is you know attacking the rim over and over again and scoring you know X number of points. It's just that the Thunder has got to be able to execute quickly, make sharp decisions. And, you know, find that next guy. And, of course, you know, shots going down is, is going to play an impact in this game sure. as it does in every single game. Um, but you're right, you know, with, with a guy like Herb Jones, um, and this goes back to, to kind of what I was saying about restraint is, like, Shea is not going to force it right. just because, you know, the numbers on the on the box score aren't looking what they tip, like what they typically do. It's up to the Thunder to leverage that pressure from, from Herb and leverage the double team that New Orleans throws at him um, into good offense. You know, and I'm interested in what those Thunder rotations are going to be. Uh, sort of like the Pelicans, y'all don't have a ton of playoff experience, especially with this group you have now. So it's going to be the first uh, sort of rotational minutes uh, in the playoffs or play in uh, for this squad. You know, who are the eight or nine guys that you expect to really be important, you know, going forward in this game and, and, you know, whoever wins this game would see a hobbled Timberwolves team. So, uh, you know, you don't want to look ahead, but who are those guys that, that you see as important rotational pieces that maybe casual fans or maybe Pelicans fans may not know? Well, the fascinating thing about the Thunder is that there's really been, you know, throughout the season, like 13 guys that have been in the rotation. Mm -hmm. And I think that's been sort of a strategic uh, advantage for the Thunder throughout the course of the season is that opponents don't always necessarily know who's going to be in the rotation from night to night. Now, over the last few weeks, the, the starting lineup has settled a little bit more into both Jalen Williams's, who are both rookies, uh, starting alongside Shea, Josh Giddy, and um, Lou Dort. Uh, and Dort obviously will play a huge role in this game, um, getting defensive assignments on either CJ McCollum or Brandon Ingram, probably. We'll see time on both of those guys throughout the course of this game and um, Dort's ability, kind of like Jones, uh, to be a defensive stopper. We've seen that throughout the course of his career. He's had some high-profile opportunities uh, in the playoffs, that, that seven-game series with the Houston Rockets and the job he did on James Harden. Um, but each each player is totally different. You know, C.J. McCollum and, and uh, Brandon Ingram are two totally different assignments for a guy like Dort. Um, and so that's why a guy like Jalen Williams, J Dub, is is bro- probably going to be a big factor there. And then off the bench for the Thunder, you know, there, you'll see a variety of guys, and and it'll be fascinating to see how the Thunder deploys them. Isaiah Joe has been one of the mm-hmm. best three point shooters in the NBA all season long, kind of right in the top ten yeah. um, for most of the year. Uh, then you know, a veteran presence in Dario Saric, who you know against this New Orleans team that has size and physicality up front, you you might need some of that from a guy like Sarich, um, Aaron Wiggins has really come on as a second year, uh, steal really from the second round last year in the 2021 draft. And, right. um, he's, he's just been, um, kind of this sensational role player. I mean, he's not going to, um, wow you with box score numbers necessarily, but he's an extremely efficient player in his role, shooting him, um, a little bit below 40% from three and just, um, one of those guys that can can kind of cut and fill in and glue and, and, and he's a solid defender too at about six foot six. Um, so those guys will certainly factor in um, to this one. And um, OKC does a really nice job of sort of rotating those lead playmakers in and out of the lineup um, with Shea, you know, playing good 
good solid chunk of the first quarter with Josh and Josh Giddy and J Dub um, coming out, you know, at some point midway through that first quarter, and then then Giddy and, and J Dub will come back in um, in the second quarters typically, and and kind of take over those minutes while Shea is uh, is on the bench. So um, you'll you'll see other guys. You'll see Lindy Waters the third potentially, who's a, a knockdown three point shooter mm-hmm. as well. Another Steele who was a basically a tryout player for the OKC Blue, the G League team, and has worked his way up to a full-time contract. So wow. uh, really special story there. Um, the guy f- is from Norman, Oklahoma, and um, was playing for the Enid Outlaws uh, professionally after right after college at Oklahoma State. So um, that's, that's a guy to keep an eye on just as a, a fun uh, story on the Thunder side. Yeah, you know, we've got our Jose Alvarado on our side. He's our scrappy right. underdog story. Uh, a guy that, you know, just, right. just walking around, talking to Pelicans fans, talking to people in the building, that, that many people are, are strangely afraid of is Isaiah Joe because of specifically his three-point shooting because the Pels have had trouble just keeping pace when the, when the shots aren't falling sometimes with three-point shooting teams. That when, when it's raining threes, we can sort of fall behind because it, we're either trading ones for threes or when you look at this game, it's, it's two really tough defenses. I would say a lot of the way that both these teams got here is through defense. Uh, so do you expect a low scoring game? A lot of people are going to sort of take the under on this one. Do you expect this one to be sort of a grinded out game or do you expect it to be one of those games where, you know, Isaiah Joe and, and some of those other contributors are reigning threes and the Pels are gonna have to keep pace. Well, in today's NBA game, you know, a low scoring game is somewhere in the, you know, one Oh five territory. So, um, everything is totally shifted on, on, um, the scoring front. I will say I think that these two teams do match up pretty well with each other defensively. I mean, we're just talking about um, the ways in which New Orleans can really be uh, a tough matchup for for any lead playmaker, given the way that they can swarm and, and double team and trap and then get out of that. Um, and then on the other side, you know, the Thunder has a couple wing defenders who um, you know can provide that presence against McCollum and, and Ingram. And as you mentioned, you know, um, at times. For both of these teams, you know, shots have not fallen from the outside from right. some of those role players, uh, and then some nights they have. And so, uh, what makes this so fascinating in a one and done environment is, as opposed to in a series where inevitably one game, you know, somebody is going to going to go off and have sure. a really hot shooting night, or or you know, the dynamic is going to be a certain way right. in game two that it's not in game four. This is a one shot deal, and so it's just going to be really fascinating. to the, you know, which of these subplots um, bubbles up to the surface in this game tonight. And I would guarantee that one of them, whatever those subplots are, is going to be very unexpected and something that we did not talk about here today so far. Yes. Yeah. That, that, expect the unexpected. That's basically the scoop right. from today. Uh, you know, and, and just before I let you go, you know, we've got our own guy that we we hope to see on the floor soon, and that's Zion Williamson. Uh, but you've got Chet Holmgren. Uh, Chet Holmgren. Sorry, it's hard to pronounce there. Uh, but, you know, it, one of the funniest things I've seen on the internet recently was the fan reaction from OKC uh, Thunder fans to the bulked up, facial haired Chet Holmgren, who is, uh, you know, rehabbing, but it looks like he is growing up and bulking up before everyone's eyes. Uh, what's been the fan reaction to seeing him and, and how voracious is the want for news? for and about him because we know everything uh here every time we check twitter it's someone just being like what's the latest on zion two seconds later what's the latest on zion <laughs> is it basically the same yeah. thing with chat there no i do i do feel for the new orleans fans in the sense that um you know zion has played this season and there's been this sort of back and forth and obviously you just feel feel terrible for zion that he's had some of these um injury situations continue to pop up but uh, with Chet, I think it was it's been a more clear cut thing from the beginning of the season that the fan base um, was kind of you know repeatedly told like he Chet is not coming back this year, and right. so I think that's that's allowed for Chet first of all to be able to get his body right, get his foot you know get his his foot healed and get himself um, back to one hundred percent without the pressure of when is he coming, you know, what, what's going on. And, um, and so that's, that's been really nice that he's been able to kind of uh, work diligently in the background, but still be connected to the team without tons and tons of questions, um, you know, coming left and right. And, and that being kind of a, to- a constant topic right. um, in the media and with the fan base. 
but it but it is cool that you know there is still a, a nice connection with the fan base, and I think a lot of excitement for next season. Um, Chet actually gave a thank you address before game number eighty two on Sunday uh, nice. to the fans in Paycom Center, and that was a really nice moment for you know Chet to kind of uh, you know send off what could have could be the last game of the season in Paycom for the Thunder. Um, and, and, you know, give a little, a little tease, a little excitement for, for next year to remind the fans, Hey, you know, uh, all, all assuming everything goes well this summer, you know, I'm, I'm going to be ready to rock in, in October. And that's why I think you guys are a dangerous team because it feels like you're playing with house money right now, being in the play in tournament right now, uh, because you've got up to eight first round picks still coming. You've got Chet Holmgren coming back next season. It's going to be a very interesting off season, win or lose this game uh, for the for your team. Uh, I'm going to be curious to to check up on the news on you guys. Well, I think that's a really important point that you make, and and there is no there's no schedule, there's no timeline. But the Thunder is the youngest team in the NBA this season. They're the yeah. second youngest team in NBA history only to last year's Thunder team. And so for OKC to be just even getting these experiences right now is a massive win. You know, there's no, there's no internal expectations heading into any year, including next year. And uh, I don't think that anybody is under the impression that as this team continues to grow and mature and develop, that it's just going to be this straight line right. and that each year there's going to be more wins than there was the year before. And that there's going to be more, you know, postseason success than there was the year before. That's just, I mean, as, as new Orleans fans know too, that's just not how this works. Right. And so, um, I think that's a really great reminder for fans in any market to, um, enjoy what you have when you have it, because you just never know what might happen the next year. And I think obviously there's a lot to really look forward to in, in Thunderland, but, yeah. Um, there's an attitude of, you know, not taking any of that for granted and really being diligent on the same process that has yielded the results this season. And, and over the last few seasons, that process has been the same. You know, this team has not done anything differently this year compared to last year or the year before, other than the results looking different on the right. scoreboard. And so I think that's a really important um, reminder for you know the the Thunder fan base and, and fan bases around the league when they're kind of looking at these these situations is you know this is a, a long journey that actually has has roots back in the you know 2020 2021 season and um, the the lessons that were learned then this is now three years of Shea Gildas Alexander being the top line guy on a scouting report right. and so he, they might not have you know postseason experience but they do have a lot of experience. Yeah. Um, playing together and, and some continuity building now. So um, certainly exciting, but this is the time uh, where where the focus and the diligence has to be extremely high because um, there's there's no guarantees. Yeah, learning how to win is important, especially for such a young squad. The Pelicans know that as well. Uh, like I said, you rem- your team reminds me of us, and I feel like in the next several years, we're going to be seeing a lot of each other in the playoffs, and it's going to be interesting. Uh, so good luck to your squad. Again, hopefully not too much good luck, but interesting <laughs> scouting report. Going to be an interesting game tonight. Uh, super excited to see it, and I'll, I'll probably see you around the arena there, Nick. Yeah, see you down over there. Thanks for having me on. Oh, thank you so much to Mr. Nick Gallo for giving the report. And you know what? Joining me fresh off getting the scoop is the intrepid Aaron Summers. Give her a follow at Aaron E. Summers for all the good info. Uh, Aaron, you know, you're out there. You got to see uh, shoot around and whatnot. Uh, What info can you give us? How did how did everyone look out there? Well, I'll say the past two days yesterday, very focused practice on the Thunder, what we've done well against them, what we've not done well against them in the past four matchups. And same goes for today. There were several times throughout practice and shoot around that Willie Green stopped the team and said, that's not good enough. Mm -hmm. We need to make sure that we're developing habits. The way that you practice will show up on the court. So he was really nailing in things like staying wide on defense, making sure that you're creating a wall, making sure that you are practicing like that with the same effort and intensity that it's going to take in this game tonight. 
in your practice and in shoot around today. So that was interesting. He was yeah. really emphasizing the effort that it was going to take at all times and everything that you were doing. And I think Pels fans like to hear that right now. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he stopped practice several times, which is more involvement than I've seen from him. So you can kind of see the the heightened level that he's taking this to right. and, and his approach to it. Um, at the end of shoot around today, you know, he did tell the team that this is a, a huge opportunity in front of them tonight. Yeah. He said he's very proud of them for getting to this point, despite everything that's happened this season. And that it should be a lot of fun tonight at the SKC, that the yes. atmosphere is going to be great. I mean, we know what it was like last year during the play-in, and I think they're expecting the home court advantage to yes. be a factor tonight. I, and I do, too. I, I feel like uh, for a bit there, it seemed like we were a bit deflated, maybe coming off of that la- that final game. Fans didn't seem that up. But as things are building, I feel like the wind is starting to get in their sails sure. a little bit. And uh, you're hoping it's going to be a raucous crowd. We need you out there. Uh, now, Larry Nance, questionable for this game. Uh, not sure if he's going to play or not. Uh, so that means, you know, when you're when you're shorthanded at center, uh, you might see some, some different rotational minutes at that center position. Uh, what do you think we might see there? I think that you're going to see Herb at the five a little bit tonight. Yeah. That's something we've seen throughout the season as needed, depending on who are playing matchups and size, that kind of stuff. But right. I think we're going to see a lot of Jackson Hayes. I think he may be the one that comes in in that role if Larry Nance is unable to go tonight. I mean, Larry has been playing through injury yeah. and then kind of adding to that in that last game of the regular season against the Timberwolves. You know, we'll see if he's able to go, as you mentioned, listed as questionable. But if not, rotation-wise, I would expect to see Jackson Hayes getting some of those minutes. He's athletic. You know, yes. he's long, and that's what sort you need. Sort of the need. stuff that people you, you wanted to get from Larry Nance when he's not injured is yeah. the athleticism, the spark, and that's sort of what Jackson And And matching up against the Thunder, that's what you're going to need, too. Yeah. You know, they do get downhill quick. They're a fast-paced team. So being able to have somebody that can move, that can be a big stopper would right. help. Yeah, length always helps. Yeah. Uh, so we... we we got to look forward to that. And, and you know, speaking of keys to our success uh, tonight, uh, Brandon Ingram is, of course, going to be the focal point of this offense with, uh, you know, no Zion here. Uh, it's going to be B.I. and he has been going off. Uh, so, you know, one of the keys to the game uh, as listed on on the Pelicans Twitter account was Dort versus Ingram. Uh, he had 42 points at Minnesota, did Ingram. So that's going to be an interesting matchup. Uh, what do you expect to see? Do you expect it to be a high-scoring game or a low-scoring game? These are two good defenses, and both teams sort of know who they got to lock down. We got to lock down SGA. Mm -hmm. They're going to try to lock down BI. Yeah, I mean, Brandon Ingram's been playing some of his best basketball of his career since the March 17 loss to it, to the Lakers. Yeah. You know, he's really turned it up a notch, almost 30 points a game. His assists have gone up. He's eight a game. And then even his rebounding has been a lot better with yes. nearly seven rebounds a yeah. game. So in all facets, he's contributing and he's really what makes this team go, whether it is facilitating, creating opportunities on the offensive end or finding ways that he can be effective himself. Yes. So yes, it all starts with Brandon Ingram on the Pelican side. And as you mentioned, it definitely comes down to SGA on the OKC side against the Pelicans, SGA has averaged 34 points a game. Mm -hmm. He's had as much as 44. So that is definitely a focal point. They blitzed him a lot, worked on that in practice and shoot around, making sure that they're trying to keep him out of the paint, not yeah. letting him drive on you. And what so, I'm worried about is because he drives constantly to the paint, right. is, is, is our defenders getting in foul trouble? And mm -hmm. because you don't want to see Jonas having to ride the bench or Herb having to ride the bench for long right. stretches of time. And that's a tricky thing with SJ who gets a lot of calls. Yeah, it's it's going to be Herb Jones as your primary defender there. I think Najee Marshall will come in and help a lot in that regard. Maybe some Josh Richardson. But 
in talking to Brandon Ingram this morning, he did say, hopefully the refs allow a little more physicality, yes. allow things to slide a little bit because it yeah. is postseason play. Yes. Well, I agree with B.I. there. <laughs> uh, they had they had actually on Get Up this morning, will Brandon Ingram score 31 or more points, yes or no? What are you going with? I, I think absolutely. I, I think, think so he has too. to. He's got to. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Just because of the need. Like, right. he's got to score more and than because 30 points. At this point, you saw it last night in the play-in games. He is going to play the entire game. Yes. yes, you know, so he's going to average more minutes. So I think that translates to more opportunities for him to score as well. Yeah, for sure. And and look, we don't want to look ahead. And obviously, the the Pelicans lost to those shorthanded Timberwolves. But this looks like such a nice path ahead when you, if you can beat this Oklahoma City Thunder mm-hmm. squad, and then you get a hobbled Timberwolves team. And that the spark from that uh, that bench fight that's gone now. Right. So uh, that that looks like a matchup that you want going into this one. Uh, so I, I don't want to start counting chickens uh, yeah. before they hatch, but it just it looks good, Aaron. It well, just we, looks good. We want the Pelicans to focus on this game. I do, but I we know. we can think about what's yes. ahead, you yeah. know, because. I don't really have any impact on One, what two, happens chickens, tonight. So Friday, uh, Todd Graffini and I were talking at shoot around this morning. The Timberwolves are a kind of a mess. Yeah. And they will leave the door open for you. Yeah. You just have to freaking take advantage of yes. it and walk through. Yes. And that's what they were not able to do on Sunday. And so I think the second time around, the Pelicans are going to be even more locked in. Yes. And... We saw, again, in the way that the Timberwolves played against the Lakers, they let the Lakers back in that game mm-hmm. so many times. And the Lakers and things did, went perfectly for the Lakers. They got a bunch of calls. And they, obviously, yes. they were going to, some way, somehow, the Lakers were going to win, and it was probably going to be with some help sure. from whistles. Yes. But, you know, the Lakers did not play a great game no. last night. No. And still, the I think Timberwolves. The Grizzlies are going to eat them alive. Let them, yeah. So I think it's a better matchup for the Pelicans to be able to go back to Minnesota. It's a quick flight versus having to go all the way to LA. Just played them. The scouting report is fresh. Right. You know, and, uh, it, it it just looks like they are a hobbled team. And again, that's the matchup you want. And it, there's just no more fun place to be than legitimately controlling your own destiny right now, which is, I, I feel like where the Pelicans are. Uh, so, Look, I'll, you're going to be busy all day, all night. I know it's going to be a, a crazy one for the radio and TV crews, so you're out and about doing everything. I'm going to let you go here, but thank you so much for giving us the scoop on the uh, shoot-around. Yeah. And uh, looking forward to seeing you on the sideline tonight, Aaron. Yeah, hearing, definitely. Hearing you on the radio. And our radio broadcast, the Pelicans broadcast, will be the NBA radio broadcast tonight, so you can listen to us on Sirius XM. There you go. Just, you know... Turn the TV down and turn the radio up. There you go. You want to hear the dulcet tones of Aaron E. Summers and coming Todd, through your airwaves. Todd did. He promised me he was going to be a little more upbeat because of that today. Okay, we'll see. We'll see. I'm going to give him a few little <laughs> treats and some extra coffee. So I don't know. Maybe more. Maybe less coffee is good for Todd. But uh, <laughs> we look forward to it as always. Good scoop there, Aaron Summers. And uh, this is it, Pelicans fans. We will see you tonight. I expect if you are within the sound of my voice that you will be in the blender or if not in the blender, hollering so loud you maybe get evicted wherever you dwell. Uh, This is that we need this, Pelicans fans. We need this home court advantage to absolutely mean something. So get lubricated, get loud, gird your loins. Uh, once again, missing Jim Eichenhofer. Got the empty chair just sitting there. And, uh, you know, I, I miss him, but he is getting better. We hope to see him and hear from him soon. Big thanks as well to Nick Gallo, sideline reporter for the Oklahoma City Thunder. We'll be seeing him as well on the sidelines tonight. Thank you so much for listening to the Pelicans podcast. Hey, Please continue to tell your friends and pals. Have you listened to it on Spotify? Hey, you know, the Pelicans podcast. Have you checked it out on iTunes? We love that stuff. So uh, give us a five-star rating. Tell everybody the Pelicans podcast is cool. We will talk to you on Friday with big news one way or the other. So until then. Go Pelicans! Thanks for listening to the New Orleans Pelicans podcast presented by SeatGeek. 
Join us three times per week on Pelicans.com, the Pelicans mobile app, or you can subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. We'll see you next time right here on the New Orleans Pelicans podcast presented by SeatGeek. Blocked by Jones! He's got it! Not on her, baby! Not on her! Lights out in New Orleans!